This is part 3 of our set 2 values add major ship enhancement drills and what is our goal? Hmm, <laughs> that's good! To top the board exam, let's continue! Number 51. What is the best legal document that safeguards the promotion of values education in the Philippines? Arbeck 2002. 1987 Philippine Constitution, Charter of the United Nations, Universal Declaration of Human Rights. What's your answer, teacher? The answer here is, of course, option B. The Arbeck or Revised Basic education curriculum of, of 2002 or basic education curriculum of 2002 was based on a 16 year of study from 1986 so from old curriculum na eight learning areas naging five core courses na lang siya sa RBEC so yung eight learning areas were values education english math ap or araling panlipunan science and technology pem or yung tinatawag natin na pe physical education health and music Filipino and the THE or Technology Home Economics. So sa Arbeck nagkaroon na lang ng 5 core courses, yung Filipino, English, Science, Math and Makabayan. So yung Makabayan marami siyang sub areas. So one of them was Values Education. And then sa K to 12 nagkaroon ng revision again, of course, and Values Education uh, became one of the subjects from grades 1 to 10. So, the present curriculum. The 1987 Philippine Constitution, of course, is the best legal document that safeguards the promotion of values education. Sa preamble pala, makikita na natin ang uh, support. And then, specifically sa Article 2, Section 2, nakalagay doon, all educational institutions shall inculcate patriotism and nationalism, foster love of humanity, respect for human rights, strengthening ethical and spiritual values, and develop moral character and personal discipline. So how can the state do that? One of the tools that the state can use is the education and we use values education. We have values education to form our future citizens, our young generation. So we also find support from Article 2, Section 13, Section 17, and Article 14, Section 3. Yung Charter of the United Nations naman ay pinirmahan noong 1945 that mandates the United Nations and its members to maintain international peace and security, uphold international laws, achieve higher standards of living for their citizens, address problems related to economics, health, and society, and promote universal respect for and observance of human rights. Kasama na rin yung fundamental freedoms for all without distinction as to race, sex, language, or religion. Yung UDHR or Universal Declaration of Human Rights is an international document that enshrines the rights and freedoms of all human beings. It was ratified in 1948 in Paris, France. So number 51 is option B. You got it. Good job. 52. Which of the following statements best describes the moral recovery program? It was as a research project of the government that looked into the strengths and weaknesses of the Filipino character. It was a program started by President Gloria Arroyo inspired by the EDSA Peaceful Revolution. It was a government program authored by President Fidel Ramos aimed to replace the economic recovery program. It was a government program aimed to create a critical mass for the genuine movement for national renewal and change. What's your answer, teacher? The answer here is... Yup! Option D. The MRP was implemented during the administration of President Ram uh, Fidel V. Ramos or FVR, which is intended to encourage all sectors of the government to start moral and personal renewal from within. 
and therefore build a critical mass for national moral recovery and developmental change. In option A, yes, the MRP was research-based, but it was a government program. The research in initiated by Senator Shahani on the strengths and weaknesses of the Filipino character was the anchor of the MRP which recommended goals for change. In option B, although the MRP was inspired by the EDSA revolution, the program was officially called as the Moral Recovery Program by President Fidel Ramos. In option C, the MRP was not designed to replace the Economic Recovery Program but was intended to be done along with the Economic Recovery Program. It was believed that you know, more, uh, economic recovery could not stand alone without the moral recovery. So number 52 is option D. 53. Which is considered the ultimate basis for the guiding principles of values development? A. Maslow's hierarchy of needs, moral law or natural law, Philippines educational aims, DEX values education program. And uh, what's your answer, teacher? The answer here is option. Good job. All the other options are ultimately based on the principles of natural law. Number 53, option B. 54. The multidimensionality of the human person allows him or her to grow from childhood to adulthood responsibly. Act different roles in relating with others in the community. Use his or her various talents in attaining his or her self-actualization. Develop his or her faculties and potentials and use this in enriching others and improving the community. What is your answer, teacher? When we talk about our multidimensionality, we are talking about many aspects of our lives, both simple and complex. And those aspects are interrelated. And it allows us to do all of these options. But the best answer is option D. These options refers to the physical, intellectual, moral, and spiritual dimensions, including our social and political dimensions. So number 54 is option D. Number 55, which is not a valid cultural foundation for values education in the Philippines? A. Western inclination as a result of advancement of technology, love, freedom, and sovereignty. Spirituality or the is spirituality of the Filipino as an oriental. World and future orientedness of the present generation. What's your answer, teacher? When we say cultural foundation for values education in the Philippines, we are looking for any a cultural element or tradition related to Philippines or Filipinos. So, option A is not a valid cultural foundation for values education in the Philippines. Options B, C, and D are valid. So, 55, option A. 56. Personalism is positive in itself. Extreme personalism is not because this leads to ease in dealing with people, tolerance of efficiency, assessing matters objectively, subjectivity of judgment. The answer is option D. Our judgments are based on personal impressions or feelings or opinions. Number 56, option D. 57. All of the following except one are goals of the MRP, Moral Recovery Program. Which goal has not been listed? Value the habits of discipline and hard work. Aspire for world competitiveness. Sense of common good and justice. Sense of integrity and accountability. What is your answer, teacher? What are MRP's goals for change? So, mayroong lima na indicated the goals are to develop in the Filipino, number one, a sense of patriotism and national pride, a genuine love, appreciation, and commitment to the Philippines and things Filipino. Number two, a sense of common good, ability to look beyond selfish interests, a sense of justice, and a sense of outrage at its violence. Number three, a sense of integrity and accountability and aversion towards graft and corruption in society. 
and an avoidance of the practice in one's daily life. Number four, the value and habits of discipline and hard work. Number five, the value and habits of self-reflection and analysis, the internalization of spiritual values, the emphasis of essence rather than form. So alin ang hindi nabanggit? Yep, that is option B. Number 57, option B. Number 58, which strategy for change would be most appropriate in preventing Ningas Kogon? A. Network of Change Initiator Roles of Power Holder and Mass Act of Will and Self-Reliance Holistic Individual and Structural Change What's your answer, teacher? What is Ningas Kogon? Kogon? Marami nito sa bundok. <laughs> Kung rich kid ka, malamang di mo alam ang Kogon. <laughs> Joke lang. Ang Kogon ay isang uri ng damo na kapag natuyo, magandang gamitin pang siga o pangsunog ng basura o mga tuyong dahon. Pag sinindihan ang tuyong Kogon, sobrang malagablab, maapoy. Pero saglit lang ta- talaga. Saglit lang siyang maglagablab. Okay, malagablab siya sa simula. So pag sinabing ningas kogon, magaling lang sa umpisa. Pag nahirapan na or nakatikim na ng kaunting challenge or criticism, umaayaw na. Bumibitaw na agad. Hindi na kasi convenient at comfortable. Halimbawa, New Year's resolution, ay magwo-workout na talaga ako para mag-lose na ng weight ko. Second week pa lang ng January, ah, give up na. <laughs> Ningas kogon. Ay, madayat na. Pero nung nagutom, sa may nakitang lechon, patatim, crispy pata. Ah, forget about the diet. <laughs> Ningas kogon. So, going back to this item, number 58, alin daw ang pwedeng strategy para malab- mabawas, malab- malabanan ang ningas kogon? Ang tamang sagot dito ay option C. Determinasyon ang kalooban at pagsasakripisyo. Kahit mahirap, fight sana! Laban lang! Alright, number 58 is option C. 59. Which is the meaning of dynamism of values? Values are universal truths which human beings hold to be good and important. Values are biologically transmitted. Values are changing and adjusting to the needs and demands of the times. Values are learned from experiences. What's your answer, teacher? Dynamism means what? <laughs> Continuous evolution or change. Patuloy na nagbabago. Dynamic. The answer here is option C. Number 59, option C. 60. What is implied by this statement? Values education is expected to be integrated in all learning areas. Teachers should teach values every day and in every lesson. Only trained teachers should integrate values in their lessons. Values integrated should be incidental. Every teacher is a values education teacher. What's your answer, teacher? I would like to make a correction here. Kung natapos mo na yung set 1, sa item number 31, ang sagot ko doon ay, teachers should teach values every day and in every lesson. After deeper analysis and reflection, mali po pala. Pasensya na po ha. <laughs> Pero mali po ako doon. My apologies. Ang tamang sagot po ay, every teacher is a values education teacher. Kung susuriin, ang integration ng values ay in all learning areas. So we can assume na regardless of levels or grades, ang um, values ay ma-integrate. Dapat ang values ay dapat ma-integrate. So it sounds like, you know, and in that sense, the integration is vertical. Actually, pwedeng total vertical integration siya. <coughs> and for that reason, lahat ng guro sa bawat asignatura ay obligado na maging values education teacher. Okay po. So number 60 is option D. Just don't forget this answer kasi pwedeng mag-iba-iba ang position sa options. Pero yan yung sagot. Ayos ba? Okay, number 60 is option D. 61. Which of the following is the values education program anchored on? DEX SEDP 1099 or 1099. Values Education Act of 2001. 
Education Act of 1986, Philippine Constitution of 1987. The answer is option D. Nabanggit ko na yung mga reasons sa item number 51. Review nyo na lang po ha. Revisit that item. 62. Which is not a goal of values education in the Philippines? Respect for religious diversities must be imbibed by both teachers and learners of values. Developing the faith in the supreme being as part is part of moral education. Appreciation of common beliefs among various religions is a primary concern in teaching values. Religion is not a main issue when handling values education classes where students have different religious orientations. What's your answer, teacher? The answer here is... Yep, option C. Appreciation of common beliefs among various religions is not a primary concern in teaching values. For more details regarding the goals of values education, kindly check the lectures in the playlist under the course Legal Basis of Values Education. Nandun po yan naka-itemized, enumerated. Number 62 is option C. 63. Which of the following indicators can be used as a barometer for measuring sustainable human development? Increased awareness and protection of the environment. Higher employability of the skilled workforce. Lower inflation rate as indicated by a higher GNP. Improved health and general well-being of the community. What's your answer, teacher? What is sustainable development? The United Nations defined sustainable development as a form of development that meets the needs of the present generation without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their needs. So, ibig sabihin, ang development ay hindi lang pang kasalukuyan, kundi pang hanggang sa mga darating pang pahenerasyon, kaya tinatawag na sustainable When we say human development naman, the United Nations um, Development Program or yung UNDP defines it in their 2016 Human Development Report that human development is all about human freedom. Freedom to realize the full potential of every human life, not just of a few, nor of most, But all lives in every corner of the world, now and in the future. So sustainable human development, therefore, is pursuing the human development or pursuing the freedom to realize their full potential without compromising the freedom of the future generation to realize their full potential. So ano ito? Um, multidisciplinary and interrelated sa iba't ibang discipline sa lalo na sa kapaligiran sa pag-aalaga ng environment kaya meron tayong environmental education sa values education kasi kasama ito doon so ibig sabihin magiging maganda ang buhay natin ngayon pero matitiyak din natin na magiging maganda rin ang buhay ng mga magiging apo at apo ng mga apo natin so this is oversimplified na kasi in reality Sustainable human development is multidimensional and complex concept. Siguro dahil na rin sa complexity ng ating human nature and the way we interact with each other as individual and group and partly as a result of how we view our roles in the ecosystem and the way we treat our environment, di ba? Kasama yan. Pakahalaga yung pag-treat sa environment. Kasi kung sabog-sabog ng ating kalikasan kagubatan ngayon, paano na yung future generation? ba? Diba? Na in danger na yung kanilang ability, yung kanilang freedom in the future to live uh, peaceful, healthy, at uh, safe na sa environment. Well, the United Nations Development Program, yung UNDP, Pwede nyo i-search sa Google yung UNDP or United Nations Development Program for more details. So, this um, specific branch of United Nations created the HDI or Human Development Index to emphasize that people and their capabilities or potentials should be the ultimate criteria for assessing the development of a country, not the economic growth alone. So, there are three dimensions of HDI na binigay ng UNDP yung tatlo ay yung long and healthy life knowledge and a decent standard of living 
So yung indicator ng health dimension is yung life expectancy. Gaano kahaba ang buhay sa, ng mga tao sa isang bansa. Sa Pilipinas, ang life expectancy natin between 50 to 60 lang. ba diba? Ikli. May goodness sa Japan ang umaabot sila ng 100 years old. Kaya karamihan estudyante ko sa mga sa mga Ikaiwa, yung alam mo yung Ikaiwa is a conversational school. English conversation is school. Ang dami kong senior citizens na mga <laughs> estudyante and I enjoy speaking with them. I learn a lot from them. Ano mga mga ano, dami-dami nila. Kasi they are uh, the oldest uh, population in the world according to some research. Makikita niyo naman yan pag sinearch niyo sa Google. Ang tatanda na ng population dito sa Japan. So, that's the first one. The indicator of health ex- dimension is life expectancy. Yung indicator naman ng knowledge dimension is yung uh, nasusukat siya by means of years of schooling. Gaano kahaba sa Pilipinas, buti binago na. Dati kasi 10 years lang yung basic education. At least ngayon, 12 na. So, we are already at par with other countries. Parang tayo yung pinakahuli yata na nag-change. K-12 na. So, knowledge. So, indicator naman ng standard of living is measured by gross national income per capita, yung GNI. The GNI is considered a better indicator of the citizen's ability to live a decent life. Siyempre, kasi pag mataas naman yung sweldo, o maganda yung sweldo, ibig sabihin mo, a-afford natin o nila yung tama pagkaramang pagkain, tirahan, sa so, GNI. So, the HDI developed by UNDP can be used to question the national policy and stimulate debate about the government policy priorities. Ano ba ang priority ng ating administrasyon? Human development ba? Or personal agenda development? <laughs> you can judge. So the HDI is a simplified version of HDRO, Human Development Report Office. It captures only part of what human development entails. So, the HDRO, yung Human Development Report Office, branch din yan ng United Nations, provides composite indices, index, that reflect inequalities, poverty, human security, empowerment, and so on. So, if you need more details on this, kindly read online the United Nations Indicators of Sustainable Development. Makikita mo din yan doon. <clears throat> Now, going back to this item, number 63. The answer here is option. Yeah, it's option B. The higher employability of the skilled workforce will eventually lead to employment, which is turn, which in turn uh, will lead to a higher gross national income per capita. At kung tumaas ang income ng mga individual na mamamayan, ibig sabihin they will be able to raise their standard of living. So number 63 is option B. Did you get it, teacher? <clears throat> Good job. 63, option B. 64, which of the following factors may impose the least direct effect in the development of honesty? Media exposure, parental behavior, social expectations, and f- norms. Leadership roles. What's your answer, teacher? Number 64, the answer is option A. It has the least direct effect in the de- development of honesty. Okay? 64, option A. Number 65. When does the kanya-kanya syndrome become positive? When one can discern what he likes in life. When the benefit of others is viewed as one's loss. When one protects individual interests. When one becomes self-reliant and can stand on his own. What's your answer, teacher? Kanya-kanya syndrome is one of our negative traits, di ba? Pero, pwede itong maging positive. Tanong, kailan nagiging positive or okay ang kanya-kanya syndrome? A. Kapag kaya mong pagnilayan kung ano ang gusto mo sa buhay. B. Kapag nakikita natin na ang, naka, na ang nakakatulong sa iba ay kawalan sa atin. Hirap i-translate, no? <laughs> C. Kapag pinuprotektahan mo ang iyong mga interests. D. 
kapag umaasa ka sa sarili at kaya mo nang tumayo sa sarili mong mga paa. Okay, the answer here is... Yeah, option D. Halimbawa, kapag sanay ka sa kanya-kanya at napunta ka halimbawa sa, ipo, sa isang lugar o bansa, nag-OFW ka at na, you know, walang pakialaman, siguradong madali ka makaka-adjust. So in this case, positive ang naging effect ng kanya-kanya syndrome. Pero, kung hindi ka sanay, aba, mahihirapan ka, iiyak ka agad. <laughs> Kasi homesick, you know, homesickness. Sa madaling salita, may positive effect ang kanya-kanya syndrome. Okay? So number 65 is option D. 66, which can best demonstrate civic consciousness? Proud to be Pinoy. Paying taxes. Technology transfer. Waste disposal awareness. What's your answer, teacher? CV consciousness is a form of social consciousness coexisting with the concept of citizen. So CV consciousness mainly refers to cognition of our status, rights, and obligations. So cognition, as a state of cognition pala. So the answer here is option D. It's targeting the awareness, the attitude, not the behavior. Okay? 66 is option D. Number 67, which of the following conditions best guarantee that values development program in the barangay will be successful? The barangay leaders believes in the program. There is a budget to implement it. The whole barangay is actively involved. There are leaders who will initiate its implementation. What's your answer, teacher? The answer here is... Yep, option C. Napakaganda, di ba? Very ideal. But in reality, mahirap ito. Ang unang concern ni Kapitan ay ang budget. <laughs> so number 67 is option C. 68. Which of the following individuals does not exhibit vulnerability to corruption? Corporate leader who bribes in public bidding? A political leader who resorts to vote buying? A waiter who finds the reports finds and reports a lost item in the restaurants to the authority. A public employee who neglects his duty. And what's your answer, teacher? Ali na pinakamabait. Aba. Pag ganito lahat ang tanong sa board exam, siguradong perfect, di ba? <laughs> so the answer here is option C. Pinakamabait. 68 option C. 69. Which of the following best shows the weakness of familism? Family-centeredness, patronage and political dynasties, loyalty to the family, concern for family. The answer is option? Yeah, option B. Nako, talamak yan sa atin. Padrino system and political dynasties. Presidente na, tapos ang kapatid, senator, ang anak, congressman, ang kamag-anak, governor, mayor, etc. Hi, buhay. <laughs> Wala akong pinapangalanan. Pero it's happening in our beloved country. So number 69 is option B. 70. Filipinos are observed to be passive and lacking in initiative, which does not illustrate these traits. Palusot syndrome. Tolerance for violation of human rights. Submissiveness to authority. Quick resignation to one's fate. Mm. Ano ba yung passive? Yung naghihintay ka na lang na bumagsak yung bayabas sa iyong mga bibig. <laughs> Wan tamad. Kulang sa pagkukusa. Walang pakialam sa nangyayari sa paligid. So, ang sagot dito ay option A. Kasi, it does not illustrate being passive. So, probably, it illustrates lack of discipline. So, yung option B shows passivity. Kapag mataas na ang tolerance sa violence, it indicates our lack of concern. Wala na halos pakialam. Diba? May binubugbog ng tao dun sa gilid. Wala tayong ginawa. Pinanood pa natin at vinidyo. Pinaw sa social media. Since tinan tumawag ng authority or awatin. Okay? Mataas ang tolerance sa violence. Sige lang, bugbogin mo lang. <laughs> Option C, kapag submissive sa mga may kapangyarihan, sunod lang ng sunod. It also shows passivity. Option D, it also shows passivity and lack of initiative. Yung tipo na may paraan pa naman na pwede magawa pero give up na lang. Bahala na. 
'di ba ganun? Bahala na si Tanggol. <laughs> Bahala na si Darna. So, number 70, option A. Number 71. The educational policy statement in Article 14, Section 3 clearly mandates that all educational institutions implement values education programs in all levels of education. All educational institutions teach values education as a separate subject. All educational institutions inculcate and teach values. All educational institutions teach the four main concepts of values. What's your answer, teacher? The Article 14, Section 3 clearly mandates that all educational institutions should teach nationalism, fostered love of humanity, respect for human rights, appreciation of the role of national heroes in the historical development of the country, teach the rights and duties of the citizenship, strengthen ethical and spiritual values, develop moral character and personal discipline, encourage critical and creative thinking, broaden scientific and technological knowledge, and promote vocational efficiency. So the answer here is option C. So we can infer this option in this line, strengthen ethical and spiritual values. Develop moral character and personal discipline. Okay, so how do we do that? How do we strengthen ethical and spiritual values? How do we develop moral character and personal discipline? So the answer, inculcate and teach values, especially in schools. So number 71 is option C. 72. It was in 1988 that values education was made as the educational thrust in all levels of Philippine education through the leadership of Dr. Lourdes R. Kisumbing, President Fidel V. Ramos, Senator Leticia R. Shahani, President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. What is your answer, teacher? The answer is, yep. Option A, Dr. Lourdes Arkesum being, she served as the Secretary of DEX, Department of Education, Culture, and Sports. Ngayon, DepEd na. So, DEX from 1986 to 1989. So, number 72, option A. Number 73, all except one are the characteristics that the Valis Education Program wants to develop in the Filipinos, which is the exception. Self-actualized, integrally developed human beings imbued with a sense of human dignity. Social beings with a sense of responsibility for their community and environment. An abiding faith in God as a reflection of their spiritual being. Tolerant and open disposition of the mind. What is your answer, teacher? The answer here is option... Yeah, it's option D. Of course, we also teach option D. Tolerant and open disposition of the mind, but usually we do not do it in values education. We do it or we teach this in other subjects like science, especially as part of scientific attitude. So number 73 is option D. Number 74, which is the value that regards others dignity with with, dig, uh, with dignity and respect, sorry. A, sensitivity. Faith and religiosity, pakiki pagkapwa, flexibility and adaptability. What's your answer, teacher? Yep, the answer is option C. 74, option C. 75, which is not a weakness of the Filipino character according to the Moral Recovery Program. Extreme personalism, passivity and lack of initiative, materialism. Colonial mentality. If you review the weaknesses of the Filipino character, you will see extreme personalism, lack of discipline, passivity and lack of initiative, colonial mentality, kanya-kanya syndrome, lack of self-analysis and self-reflection. So, hindi mo makikita yung option C, materialism. So, the answer is option C. 75 is option C. Okay. You did it. How many points did you get, teacher? Did you get 15 and above? If you get 15 points and above, hit the like button. If you got 20 points and above, 
hit the subscribe button kung hindi ka pa nakasubscribe. Okay? So, I would like to see your score at the comment section so that you can also track your progress so the next time you take this deal, um, you will be able to see if you're making progress kung tumataas yung retention rate. Okay, so this brings us to the end of part 3. So, see you guys in the next part. Thank you. Have a great day.